So the storyline of Albert, uh, it's about this one guy, he's lost everything, his family has sold his house, um, and they send him off to a nursing home. Um, he, so he, he gets this inspiration to leave, uh, and he, come, he hatches this grand uh, escape plan. Um, there's another woman at the nursing home, Agnes, who decides to follow him. I think she, she might fancy him a little bit. Um, so she follows him. Basically what happens is once they get out of the nursing home, they're still being chased by the manager and the nurses, but they go out on these crazy adventures. So they go uh, skydiving and they get tattoos and they do all of these, these things. And it's just about these two people who, despite their age and despite their limitations, can really uh, make a difference. Uh, my inspiration for Elbert came from quite a few places, including many films like The Shawshank Redemption, um, old episodes of Hogan, Hogan's Heroes, uh, and even things like Toy Story 3. Um, but really, it came from an idea that I had with a friend when we were back in primary school. Uh, we were both really into Star Wars, and we decided to make this short movie. I don't think it ever got finished, but uh, it was a Star Wars parody uh, that we called Granny Wars, and it was about these two grandmas that escaped their nursing home. Of course, the whole thing was Star Wars themed, but um, yeah, you know, I, essentially, I took that idea and made it into something a bit more watchable, <laughs> hopefully. Uh, the planning of Albert was uh, a pretty big process. I mean, once I'd gotten the script down pat, uh, it was really the storyboards and the shot list that made everything come together during production. So I'd go through the script line by line and work out exactly what camera angle I wanted happening, um, you know, and where the actors were in terms of blocking. Uh, and, th and through that, I was able to create a schedule based on availability of actors and locations and all of that, which took uh, quite a lot of time just trying to figure all of that out. But once I had it, then I was able to build this strong schedule and when I was shooting, I could just look at that and go, okay, I'm up to this shot number and I'd shoot it and cross it off and I didn't have to think about it anymore. So the main character, Elbert, was actually my grandfather. So that was something really uh, helpful to have a member of the family and get them involved because uh, he was around a lot and he was willing. Um, another lady was a family friend, so she was also willing and that was fantastic. I had a lot of extras in the film and they were all elderly people. So I actually went down to the local um, RSL and legacy group and I went down and I pretty much pitched the idea to them. I said, hey, would you, be, would you guys be willing to uh, come up and shoot with me for a day? And I, t I told them about the story um, and there was yeah, a, a 10 or so of these uh, lovely old men and women who decided that that would be a great day. Uh, and they came up and we, and we had a really good fun time shooting. For me, it was the biggest production that I'd um, gone about doing. Uh, so there was you know, quite a lot of things logistically to work out. Um, and I mean, most of it did come together on the days that I had planned to shoot, but there were things like uh, last minute, certain actors and certain people saying that they weren't available, which uh, threw me out quite a bit, which meant I was either having to uh, you know, do uh, you know, the jobs of three people at once or uh, replan and shoot things on different days, which uh, got a bit stressful, but look, for the most part, things went relatively well. There's always gonna be issues while filming, and I, I guess it's just about trying to make the decision of, uh, do you try and spend seven takes getting this thing right, or do you figure out another way to do it? Um, so an example of that is, there was one part when I was filming, um, and I had Albert in the trolley going down a hill, and we were actually out and my, my wonderful grandfather had uh, volunteered to be in the trolley and we were trying uh, to sort of push this trolley along the road and it just wasn't working. So after three or four takes when I was like, this is just not going anywhere, I, could, I probably could have pressed on and we could have got it, but it would have taken a long time. So I was able to just make the call and figure out another way to do it. So I just shot a close up of the wheels going past without anyone in it. Yeah, look, post-production for Albert was uh, quite a big thing there, and there was quite a lot involved in it. I think things that really helped were uh, logging my shots, so labeling all of my footage and knowing what was what, uh, as well as uh, things like just starting off with a really rough cut um, and going from there uh, and just getting things tighter and tighter. I wanted it to be uh, a really fast-paced uh, film. So I would you know, get this film cut down to 17 minutes and go, oh my goodness, this is so long. And I was able to actually get that 17 minutes down to 10 minutes without losing any material, uh, just by thinking about my cuts properly and working out uh, where they would best be suited. Stage one, 11 p.m. Create a diversion. 
and distract nurse on duty. Well, I know a few other people who uh, either wrote the music for themselves or did something like that, but I am the most unmusical person in the world, I think. Uh, you know, I, I don't have a clue when it comes to musical instruments. So um, for me, it was all about finding music online that was royalty free and free as well, because uh, I really didn't have money to spend on that. But primarily, I went to a website called incompetech.com, and there's a whole lot of great free music there from a guy named Kevin McLeod. Uh, and there's another place that I went, uh, actually on YouTube. So it's called the YouTube Creator Studio and they've got a massive list of free music uh, ready for anyone to download, which is fantastic. Uh, in terms of lighting, I didn't have uh, expensive lights or a lot of lights. So I, I mean, I did a lot of research in terms of types of lighting and ways to light things, um, basic three point lighting and going from there. Uh, but I was able to use those techniques, not with expensive lights or lots of lights, but just with some really basic uh, $30 work lights that I got from Bunnings. Um, and I, things like I was using an iPhone torch for a lot of it. Um, and, you know, just going with what I had available to me. I think if I had to give one piece of advice, it would be don't stress about your gear and equipment. If you've got a good story, that's what matters. So spend more time uh, developing your story than trying to source gear and work out exactly how you're gonna shoot it in that way. Um, because you know a good story that's shot a little bit out of focus doesn't matter because people will be intrigued by the story. So uh, yeah, I guess that's it. Just, just focus on the story and the characters um, and the themes and really the gear comes second to that.